Hello! Welcome back to another exciting, adventurous, uh, Adventure. okay edition of Let's Talk. <laughs> uh, I'm your host, Laughing Boy LP, and I'm back again with Sab Irene. Hello. Hiya. Hey, how's it going? I'm, I'm almost... living, you know that. I think that's what's most important. How are, how are yeah. you? <laughs> uh, same. That's a good answer. I like it. Yeah, we're off to a great start. <laughs> <laughs> hit, hit him with the easy ones. <laughs> Living right. insane. Best best things you can yeah. be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, about the same. <laughs> uh, we, so last time we talked about Twitch. We talked about collaborations, working with other people, like kind of what we're doing right now. Hey. Yeah. How weird. Uh, today we'll be talking about just kind of like the then and now, the, you know, where, where do you see yourself in five years? What kind, if you could be any tree at all, oh my god! What would it be, and why is it an oak tree? Because that's what everyone picks. Because they're strong and provide shade from the sun. I feel like that's what everyone says when they're asked that question, and they say oak tree. It's about the same, yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> it's like it's like the go-to answer because Google told me to say it. Let's. We're kind of first section. We talk about like how things were, how things are now. We've had a couple of those questions, but we're gonna do more of them because I said so. It's my show. It's okay. what I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Within reason. Within reason. So you've uploaded your first video to YouTube. How do you feel? And do you still kind of feel that same sense of accomplishment today with newer videos? I don't think I felt accomplishment after the first one. I think I felt paralyzing <laughs> fear. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, I was a young kid and I was like, I just recorded a, a, a cover in my poorly lit living room with our piano on my Mac 2013 macbook pro or whatever um you know that super clunky rectangle um mm-hmm. with my webcam trying to finagle it on a series of tables to so that you could see the piano the right way um so like i definitely felt nervous and i think i still get like um anxious whenever i put out a video but it's like normally like the the adrenaline where you're just like oh my god i'm putting out a video people are gonna see it like you know and not just me um <laughs> <laughs> So I think, like, I, I get excited about that now. Um, still, like, always a little nervous with each cover where I'm just like, ah, oh, I'm like, is this really what I want to put out kind of thing? Even though nine times out of ten, yes. Um, but I think there's always those, like, butterflies kind of thing where it's like, this is where my art goes beyond me. Because, like, once you put out art, it is no longer, like, connected to the artist, really. It's just out there. Um, yeah. which can sometimes be a terrifying feeling, but like, I definitely feel, um, more a sense of accomplishment and, and pride. Like whenever I put something on, I'm like, I made that. Um, so that's like a, re- <laughs> it's like a really cool feeling, I think. As you have grown, as your channel has grown, uh, in what ways has viewing content creation holistically changed for you? I think that... One thing I told myself when I first started, but have really followed through on, um, is really just doing what I want to do. Um, I don't like to cater to what people want me to do because that often can result in, you know, me just doing something for the sake of another person, but I don't necessarily like it. So just kind of being true to myself and like, you know, drawing from what makes me happy and, you know, motivates me to create. And I feel like as I've developed more as a musician and been exposed to, you know, different types of music over the years, it's allowed me to really tap into that and find um, a little bit better, you know, what I really want to do. What is my style? Because it's constantly evolving, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, and you go through periods where you're like, I don't like this as my style anymore. Um, Because when you try to fly blind a bit where you're just like, all right, well, I'm going to make a music cover of Dire Dire Docs. And it's like, okay, but what do you want it to sound like? Oh, I don't know. (laughs) Like music, I guess? (laughs) Music, I guess. Um, I had a friend ask me earlier today, they're like, you know, what do you want your music to be? I'm like, I want it to be something that like, you know, is drawn from music that I like, but is personal to me, which is like the vaguest answer in the world. Um, You know, really thinking about where do you draw inspiration from? Because, like, you know, when you don't have a frame of reference or a foundation, it's hard to really create what you want. 
So that's something mm-hmm. that like I'm still struggling with and I have been. So it's something that I'm trying to think about now is like, all right, well, what artists do I draw inspiration from and how can I really channel that influence into my work to really give it a sound that I enjoy and make it more personal for myself? So you're thinking more about how do I continue to evolve? How Pretty do much. I continue to take what I've learned before and implement that mm-hmm. but how do I still make that that's make that into something that is still myself exactly like how do I evolve but still keep it true to who I am well I think yeah I really it's just an evolution and you'll always kind of be your well to some degree I feel like you'll always be yourself in that way right um as long as you I think aren't catering specifically to what you think people want you to be. Exactly. And I think that's really important and, uh, and you know, kudos for being able to continue to like, to really hammer that in. It's, it's so hard. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, well, it's, it's tempting, I think, because you want to see, and I think in terms of, it depends, I think on the creator and, and their personal successes and, and I don't want to say failures, but like their personal mm-hmm. ups and downs. Like you want to have a channel that is profiting. Like if, especially if this is your job, you know, um, right. if this is your main source of income, how do you retain your sense of self, but in a way that is still bringing that return on investment? And I think yeah, it's very tempting sure. to just do either what is trending or to do things that you, you think, think people, your viewers yeah. will like. For sure. It's a really hard balance, especially like if it is your primary thing. You know, a lot of my friends talk about striking that balance between like what it is they really want to do versus, you know, the times where they have to cater, which like sometimes it aligns. But, you know, there's always that little bit where it's like, well, yeah, I'm also kind of doing this because X. Um, So it's not the same as when you're doing something purely because you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I won't name names, but there are certain people that I've talked to where they have expressed concern about something that they're releasing because they are not sure how people would receive it. And to me, that's surprising. I think in terms of more, especially like the more successful creators out there, Mm -hmm. to be able to be yourself, to evolve yourself and to continue to have your own voice out there. And have it being received just as well is a very difficult thing to do. Absolutely. And still maintaining passion. Yeah. Because that's what kind of drives us to do what we do as content creators. You know, I feel like if you're not passionate about it, you know, passion doesn't necessarily mean career. But like, you know, if you're just not passionate about it, like, why are you putting all this time into it kind of thing? Mm -hmm. What is one thing that you wish you had known about creating covers or streaming or YouTube in general that you wish you had known when you had started? Don't read the comments. <laughs> mm. um, <laughs> um, like, and, and don't get me wrong. I read every comment that comes my way. Like, especially I get notifications for it on my phone and on my laptop and stuff. Um, and I'm someone that is constantly on her laptop for work, you know, to have white noise, whatever. Um, But don't read too far into them, Um, regardless if they're positive or negative. I think, like, people say that and they're always thinking of the negative comments. Um, Honestly, most of the negative comments I get make me laugh. Um, Just because I'm like, you had to take the time while you were (laughs) watching this video to, like, say this, to go out of your way to tell me that you didn't like something. I'm like, so cool I don't know um but even positive stuff like you know don't don't shut down criticism is another thing because sometimes you think like oh well I know better than this random person leaving a video like you know leaving a comment or whatever it's like well if they deliver in a poor way you know I think it's okay to be a little dismissive but you know if you get offended at first try reading it again um you know and really see like what are they trying to to tell you because even if they don't present it in a good way they might still be right about what they're talking about like it's one thing if someone's like go kill yourself I'm like yeah uh delete this comment I don't want to have to think about this for the rest of my life um versus if someone's just kind of like the vocals weren't good it's like well why weren't they good like to you what does not good mean you know is it because I didn't sing it like the original person is it because like I was pitchy like you know I'm receptive to that but like you know don't just be 
aggressive about it. If you're just like, I think it'd be better if you added... Someone just commented the other day, like, oh, I think it'd be better if you put more reverb on the vocals to kind of blend with something better. I'm like, that's a really good piece of advice that, like, you know, I didn't think about for this cover. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's one thing if you're just like, oh, well, I don't care what that person... It's like, they could actually have something really valuable to say that can help you something that you didn't think about it's all about how you take it in yeah identifying criticism versus identifying like just negativity constructive criticism yeah yeah Yeah. yeah, exactly um because i you know criticism is kind of viewed as a very negative word even when you consider constructive criticism because people kind of see that as sarcasm yeah uh but being able to identify when somebody's trying to be helpful and even if you don't agree with it to take it in and acknowledge those kinds of things rather than saying i didn't like it yeah or you like know, saying i didn't, I like, didn't like it yeah saying yeah. i didn't like it doesn't help me become a better content creator no exactly like you and, know, it's, something, and it's sort of like yeah you probably weren't going to be a lasting viewer. So I don't know how much weight to hold your comment in. Exactly. In terms of that. Chances are if someone didn't like your video, they're not going to watch another video. So there's no sense like trying to like figure out the person. Um, Yeah. I always push with like my students when I would play them new music. Um, you know, I wouldn't tell them anything about it so they couldn't form a, a conception in their head. If I was like, hey, this is jazz. Hey, this is by, you know, so-and-so artist. This is the name of the song. Because all of that, you know, creates bias for those kids. And, like, they immediately just start putting expectations on it. Um, right. And when they would say, they're like, well, I don't really like this. And I'm like, well, what don't you like about it? I wouldn't just let them settle with, I don't like it. I'm like, what don't you like about it? I'm like, is it too fast? Do you not like the instruments? Do you not like the singer? You know, I would really make them think about, I'm like, well, why don't you like this? Or like, even if they're just like, well, I like it. I'm like, well, why do you like it? I'm like, because yeah, just think- saying that doesn't really tell me anything. Like, you know, do you like it because of the instruments? Do you like it because of the style? Like, what is nice about it to you? Yeah, I think in terms of communication, we tend to, especially when it comes to negativity, we're very quick to just point it out, but without any context. Yeah, for sure. I think we've never really been challenged, especially outside of like school and things like that, to actually come up with a reason why. I mean, for me, I can usually come up with a reason why I don't like something. When somebody tells me, like, why do you like it? I'm like, I don't know. I just do. Like, the, it, it fills me with a feeling of positivity, and I like this. And that's but, but that's a good answer, because it's better than just saying, I don't know, I like it. I like it. You know, being able to describe <laughs> that it makes you feel happy, 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 <laughs> happy or positive. Yeah, like, hippity happy. Hippity happy. Yeah, exactly. Um, being able to at least do that gives me a semblance where it's like, it makes you feel good, because there's a difference between liking something and having, you know, and make it and having it make you feel good. So yeah. even that little bit of like spe- specific, I don't know, specific specificity, yeah. specificity. That's what I was trying to say. I'm like, I don't think that's a <laughs> word. I don't know. Um, it could be. I don't know. It could be. I don't know. But <laughs> like, you know, having that detail, let's say, <laughs> yeah, makes yeah, it yeah. a little bit easier you know, to kind of just help you understand, like, why, you know, you like the things that you do and that it just makes you feel certain ways. Yeah, exactly. Like, it helps you understand yourself more and what your tastes are. And exactly. Even if I don't receive that, you know, as criticism or, like, I take that feedback and do anything with it, at least you have the the knowledge and the experience of that, of experiencing that thing and understanding mm-hmm. why you do or do not like it, which right. which then helps everybody. It just allows us to communicate better as people. Definitely. Um, what does your family think about making videos and streaming? Has that oh. changed over time? Yeah, it's changed for sure. <laughs> um, I always I always love this question because people are like, well, what do your parents think about this? Because, you know, I just went to I just went to college for four years, um, you know, getting a degree in music which already gives a lot of parents apprehension um (laughs) i'm very grateful that my my parents have been supportive uh of me from the beginning um you know just kind of a lot they've always known from a young age to just kind of let me do what i'm gonna do because i'm very uh intrinsically motivated i'm very stubborn and i always have a plan um of some kind so they know to just kind of they're like she's got this but, like, you know, they also know, you know, when I need help, I'm not afraid 
to ask them and be like, I feel like my life's falling apart. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is nice that I can do that with my parents and, and my siblings and stuff. Um, but I, I'm the youngest child. I, I have two older brothers um, and we all went to school and uh, none of us use our degrees in the traditional way. So it was really nothing new. And I was like, I'm gonna make YouTube videos. Um, <laughs> but it, there was definitely apprehension because I was young. Like, you know, what is this really gonna, what's really gonna come of it? Um, but the, the motto of my mother, who I love very dearly, is I don't understand it, but I support it. Um, you know, which is, <laughs> that's half the battle. Um, yeah. You know, I don't, ex- I, I try not to talk in specific things where I'm like, okay, mom, so I'm playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and stuff just got crazy with these characters. <laughs> like, you know, I'll talk very generally. My mom played a few games when we were younger. So I'm just like, so I'm trying to do this like task that like took a really long time. Um, and then I tried going into a menu and then my game froze and I hadn't saved in a while. So I had to go back and do this thing that took me two hours all over again. And she's like, that sucks. Um, but I wasn't it's like, relatable. yeah, it's relatable compared to, okay. So I'm like trying to do this quest to get this upgrade for, for a poppy <laughs> and stuff. Like, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm talking very generally and I do the same thing with my music work. I'm like, Oh, I'm doing a really cool cover of this song. It's inspired by a band I really like. And it's from like this really classic game. Like I talk generally so that, you know, it's more relatable, but um, getting back, getting back to the to the question, like you know, I I'm very grateful for their support. Um, you know, the fact that I've been able to go to music school. Um, the fact that I've been able to like do this, and like my main job is making YouTube videos at this moment in time, and and doing Twitch streams. Um, and the fact that you know my parents support me. Um, they actually, as a graduation present, they wanna. They're just like, yeah, whenever. You, we figure it out, like, you know, we want to get you a proper keyboard that, you, you know, for when you move. Oh, nice. And, like, yeah. I was brought to tears because, you know, that's a really sweet gesture. Um, you know, they've helped buy all my, in- like, you know, pretty much all my instruments. I bought a few myself. Um, but, like, no, that to me was a, it was a really solid gesture of, like, you know, we understand that this is your dream and that you're passionate about it and that, you know, you're really going to make whatever it is you want to happen. Um so I, I'm very grateful that, you know, my, my family supports all my wacky endeavors. Like, hey, I'm going to start making YouTube videos. I'm going to start streaming. Um, I'm going to start going to these conventions and, like, meeting a bunch of these people. <laughs> um, you know, and, of course, were they doubtful at some points and, like, scared? Of course they were, but, you know, they know me and they they trust me. So um, they still well, think, think it's again- weird. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, something that we have to kind of remind ourselves is that this is a very emerging thing. Yeah, for like, sure. Content creation has been around for a while, but I still don't think that it's really caught on into the heads of a lot of individuals. Like, right. Even I still say that if I were to do this full time, I would not call it like a nine to five job or I've, no, I've it's said not. like my real job. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think there are a lot of more conversations about like, stop saying that YouTube is not your real job. Right. Um, I've had people so, like say that I'm ridiculous for saying that. Um, like I've got, I remember like flying, I think I was flying to Japan actually. And the guy's like, Oh, what do you do? And I was like, Oh, I make YouTube videos. He goes, that's your job. I'm like, yes. I like yeah. stood my ground. I'm like, yes. He's like, well, what do you paycheck, do? I'm like, I? yeah, I'm like, I make money, dude. Like, <laughs> you know, if I can pay for rent in a city on this, like that's pretty damn impressive. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um look it was either this or GameStop oh my god um not that that's bad I just don't I have so little patience for people so that's why I like getting to work for myself um yeah everyone in my house like works a a nine to five job or like you know they they either like work in a school or an office or something so Mm -hmm. for me like you know there there are times where they're like well can you like try and be done by the time we get home I'm like I don't work a nine to five I'm like I'll be respectful like you know I'm not gonna play at seven in the morning when you're trying to get ready and like if I know you're taking a nap of course I'm not gonna play I'm gonna be sensitive to that um but like I work from like pretty much from when I get up until I go to sleep and it's not always continuous because you know creativity comes in flows like you know you can't just force it because when you do you just like sit there for five hours and you're like where did the day go I did nothing (laughs) um (laughs) I look I've had those days on my nine to five job (laughs) yeah me too. When I used to to do, I used to do an eight an eight thirty to four thirty, pretty much a nine to five. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it's basically it. Yeah. 
And I used to be like, what did I just do all day? I'm like, <laughs> I just put in a bunch of block and lots. Yeah, I just, you know, put things in numerical order while listening to video game music the entire day. That sounds about right. But what did I really mm-hmm. do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, I think, again, like, because this is such a, it's still such a new potential career path. For I sure. To be fair, I've been waiting personally for like when is this going to stop and i think a lot of people are were thinking that for like maybe a couple of years too right like back in like the 2010s oh and the yeah 2015s, for sure like we just assumed that something was going to happen and this whole thing was going to fall apart the internet but we're bubble still was going to burst yeah but it's yeah exactly it's been a while. yeah i will say one thing that's funny is that um so my dad watches like every premiere of my video and he always like texts me afterward or he calls me and he's like I really Aww. liked it um my dad's a patron of mine <laughs> um, which I think is so funny because he already helps you know like you know when I was in college he was helping pay for my school so I was just like when he did that I was like what are you doing and he goes I'm supporting you I'm like you do that <laughs> um you already do that you yeah. don't have to be on my video yeah yeah um and then like my mom watches my videos too like they know when I put them out and even like my grandpa watches my videos so like you know it, it's something that's like really sweet for me is that like these like older generations like you know like my, my grandpa who can barely operate his his tablet you know, he'll like watch my videos and he's like, you're doing real good work. He go, he thought like a video I did was like for a commercial once. And I'm like, no. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's nice that everyone in my family really likes music and we all played an instrument at one point or another. Um, yeah. Just for ourselves, not because our parents were like, you need to. Um, so like we all have a connection to music and they all can offer something different for me to learn. Like, you know, about my craft, even though they're not you know, the same type of musician that I am. Right. No, I understand. Personally speaking, um, when I assume that somebody has had a musical background, for some reason in my head, I internalize it as like, oh, your parents must have had like a huge musical background because that's what I mean, happened that happens to me. About 50%. <laughs> that's what happens about 50% of the time. Like a lot of people yeah. I went to music school with, they're like, oh yeah, my mom's like a famous violin player. They're like, what do your parents do? I'm like, office jobs. They're like, so then where does your music stuff come from? I'm like, from me. Why does it have yeah. to come from someone else? Like, my grandfather played a lot of instruments, but I barely have any memories of him doing musical things. So um, I always find that really funny. They're like, well, where did it come from? I'm like, why does it have to come from somewhere? I'm like, can't it come from me? Um, yeah. <laughs> Were there any setbacks that you've had in the past? How have you been able to overcome those? And were you able to take what you've learned and applied those to solutions more recently. And so this doesn't have to be like content creator specific mm-hmm. or streaming specific. Any like personal life experiences that you've had in the past. How have you taken those experiences and um, applied them today? I think one of the one of the most important things I've learned is really just being able to um, trust myself. And, you know, be appreciative of like what I have to offer because I think it's really easy like in in the past I've like compared myself to to friends and other people who do similar things and like I just end up feeling really bad about myself because I'm just like oh my god like you know I'm doing the same thing so like why am I not getting the same opportunities even though sometimes there weren't even opportunities I wanted but it's just kind of like that that jealousy thing where like well why are they getting it and I'm not um so that's something that I've learned to like cope with better where I'm just like, well, comparing is not going to get you anywhere. Like, you know, be confident in what you're doing. Don't be afraid to ask for help because um, that's yeah. something where I'm either like asking for people's help a little too much for my own comfort um, or I'm just like, no, 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 no. I'm going to do this all myself, but like no one achieves anything alone. Um which is something that I have to remind myself of because I've grown too dependent sometimes on getting people's feedback or opinions or, like, being able to, like, have someone help me out in a pinch. Um, And, like, there was a situation where I, like, became so dependent on that I really wasn't showing what I was capable of. I was doing a lot of collaborations. um, And, like, just everything changed where I was like, no, you're not doing collaborations for at least a few months because you need to find what it is that you bring to the table again. Um, you know, you've worked with some of these people for a long time, but that's not an excuse to, you know, kind of 
half-ass your job. So that was, like, something I went through towards the end of college. Like, um, going into my senior year, I kind of had that realization. I was like, you need to do the content. Like, you know, you need to do, like, make music that makes you happy and really shows what you can do because you can do a lot, even though sometimes you don't think it. As a person who has a channel where 98% of my content is collaboration, <laughs> <laughs> I I absolutely feel that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some of the things that I've had to really consider myself is like, it, maybe it's from a different mind point for me. I just like, oh, I'm just being a bother um, by constantly asking for feedback or constantly asking for like, for help and collaborations. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I think, one of the things that has been troubling is some I'll look back and I'll go back and edit things and then it's like a lonely process. Right. Um, and there are times where I just kind of I feel like, you know, that that Conan meme where I'm just outside of the house, like staring inwards and just being like, why can't I why can't yeah, I be yeah. there <laughs> with everyone else? Um, but I think one of the things I have to constantly remind myself is sitting there and having those thoughts and having it letting it get in the way of what you're trying to do all that does is you're kind of like putting yourself there right so if you don't get out the content if you're not like continuing to work through that struggling um then you'll you'll never get there you know right like if you never try you're never going to get to the place where you want to be exactly and so if you continue to let it you know fester and continue Mm -hmm. to let it allow you to like be depressed uh, about your situation which you are you don't even know like that you're just kind of telling yourself that that's a situation that is probably yeah. not even close to the situation but allowing that depression allowing those thoughts to get in the way of what you need or want to do and having letting you do things on your own and letting you just trying to take that dive and take those risks right. is really important to remind yourself of um, so that you can you know get back up on your feet I think, like, um, kind of going on what you said, your mind is your most powerful and dangerous weapon. I don't think people yeah. realize how much, like, mentality can really screw with you. Um, when I was younger, I used to do gymnastics just because I was like, whoa, to be able to do a flip, that'd be so cool. Um, you know, like, <laughs> like most seven, eight-year-olds do. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing was, when we started doing more advanced things like front handsprings, like backflips, um, you know, I could do like a, a front flip, no, for, like no problem at all. Um, but for me, if I told myself I couldn't do it, my body physically would not do it. Like, you know, and I'd be saying it under my breath. My instructors could hear me. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And I would freeze like my whole body would tense, like, you know, and that's all because of what I was thinking, you know, versus mm-hmm. if I was like, I can do this. Like, you know, I have people here. They can support me. Like, you know, if if something goes wrong, I have a spotter. Um, You know, if I looked at it that way, it would have been a little bit easier for me. Um, And it's the same thing in content creating. Like, you know, there are times where I'm like, oh, my God, I feel like garbage. Everything I'm doing is terrible. And then I take a step back and I'm just like, okay, that might be how you feel. But you know that that's not true. Um, and yeah. that's such a hard thing to separate. And that's been a huge thing I've been trying to like push within myself. But even when I talk to friends, I'm like, I, this is how I feel. I'm like, but I know that it isn't true. Um, and it's really hard to like tell yourself like, you know, hey, you might feel this way, but you know, that's not reality kind of thing. Well, and I think it's uh, the other thing that made that you, I'm going to piggyback off what you just said now. Um, so when you, you know, while singing, if you're constantly thinking about whether or not you're going to hit certain notes, it's much more difficult to hit them. Yep. But if you tell yourself that, like, it's so easy, just literally, like, sometimes I just tell myself, just do it. Yeah. And then it's just like, oh, wow, that was real easy. And when you just kind of do it. It's the confidence. Yeah. When you anticipate something, when you're like, oh my God, it's coming up. Oh my God, it's coming up. Like whether it's like a turn when you're driving something and music apart in a game. Yeah. Like that's where all your attention goes to instead of looking ahead to what's to come after that moment. Um, And it's really debilitating. So, you know, you just come to be like, all right, that like, you know, that moment's coming up, but then it's going to pass really quickly and you have to be ready for what's going to happen next. 
Um, because think about like if someone was like going to punch you or something like it's a reflex where you know to get out of the way versus if like you know someone were like going to punch you you're like it looks like someone's fist is coming at me and like they're probably gonna punch me and by the time you're like in that thought process someone's already like hit you to the ground um yeah exactly or what if what if i'm wrong yeah (laughs) yeah or what if i move to the left but then they suddenly like do something out yeah if you're overthinking it then it makes your task almost impossible so i know we've been doing this for the last four episodes but let's talk about you yay (laughs) i actually no i honestly i love i love answering questions but i like getting to like share just like my thoughts about things so that's why like i was really happy when you even asked me to do this from the beginning so i'm excited to answer these questions uh so with resources like tv tropes and with fans kind of documenting like every aspect of someone's career it's very easy to learn like a lot of information about internet celebrities or content creators um despite all the information that people know about you or what's out in public uh, what is one misconception about you that you get all the time? The the two that enter my mind immediately, especially like when if I'm thinking about just like when people come into a stream or um, like at a like at a convention is that people assume I'm very friendly and then by association they think I'm very touchy. I don't like to be touched um, like, you know, there are times where people I don't know who recognize me for my work and they think they know me, they'll, like, try to hug me and I feel bad stopping it, but, like, I don't like to be touched by, like, anyone. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah. when people try to hug me, I'm like, no. And some people ask, they're like, can I hug you? And I'm like, can we do a high five? Like, because that's what I'm comfortable with. Um, well, and I think that's also more of a conversation happening nowadays, too, especially pre, you know, Corona. Yeah. Yeah. The pre don't touch people virus. Uh, there has been more of a conversation of like with consent, what can and can you not do? Exactly. And I know that there are some creators and Internet celebrities out there that are very upfront about like, hey, like not comfortable with that. Can you? not do that and right. can you ask first um, yeah I always tell people I'm like ask first I'm like because maybe I'm like but you know just in general I don't like to be touched yeah yeah um, like I seize up when people try to touch me like there are times where <laughs> like people like I don't know why but like friends they'll like try to like just like poke at me like you know from like the shoulder or like sometimes my neck and I like will clamp my neck on their finger because I'm like don't <laughs> don't do that and they like get they get very scared um <laughs> <laughs> well they didn't know that you were a Venus flytrap yeah they didn't but um and sometimes people think I'm really friendly like I always say to people I'm like I have a lot more patience on the internet which is the opposite of everyone um than I do in real <laughs> life like I'm a very impatient crabby person <laughs> Um, like I, I'm nice but like if I'm not in the mood I'm like trying to go get food don't talk to me like you know and I mean it in the nicest way possible um yeah you know like when I'm at a convention for me like I'm seeing my friends it's a work event so like I can't just be spending all this time have it like it gives me anxiety when people are following me around um where especially when they don't ask and I'm like can you like ask if you're like you know if you can like hang out with us like it makes me feel a lot better than when you just follow me Um, boy i have stories um oh yeah i'm sure we could talk about for ages after after the interview Uh, you know a little yeah i have a few good stories too but ones i don't want to share they're fun they're yeah they're funny but i just (laughs) no kidding yeah uh can you recall a fan experience that had really touched you and what was that (laughs) not physically emotionally um yes exactly (laughs) This is a hard question to answer, um, and it's just because most of my experiences, they're, like, very fast with people, which I really like. Um, <laughs> well, because I, I, like, you know, I'm, I'm very... <laughs> <laughs> if that was any indication, like, you hear how yes, fast... Yes, I'm very touched. Let's move on. <laughs> well, like, you, I talk fast. I move fast. I have no patience for slowness. Um, <laughs> um but honestly, like, as cheesy as this sounds, like, any time that someone tells me how much my music means to them or that just the fact that they like my music, like, it, it brings a tear to my eye because I don't expect, you know, anything from anyone. No one owes me anything and I don't owe them anything. So the fact that, like, people come up to me and tell me how much, like, my work has helped them, 
Um, I had someone, I think it was a patron, where, like, I always send a message to every patron. Like, a personalized message, like, thanking them for, you know, supporting my dreams and shit. Um, oops, sorry. I didn't, I, <laughs> anyway, that, you know, did thanking you, them for Did you know you me. couldn't curse on it? I thought my cursing for the last three episodes was indicative of that. Were you, so, I didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, wow. But, um. There was someone that, like, I thanked them for being a patron, and they're just like, you know, your music helps me, like, manage my anxiety for when I fly, so, like, it saves me a lot of money on having to buy medication, so this is the least I can do, and I was like, that's so sweet. Um, that, and I think, like, um, there are people who have, like, given things to me at conventions, and I'm like, I, like, fall apart when that happens, because I'm like, you didn't have to do that, and I know, and sometimes I, like, know how expensive those things were. All those things are nice, but I think meeting my students in person, I've met a few of them at conventions, that's one of the coolest, like, experiences I think I've ever had, because, like, I, you know, I've met some of them before, or, like, you know, just, like, a webcam, so to, like, get to meet with them in person and actually get to talk with them. Um, Mm -hmm. I went out for one of my students, because they're all adults, um... And they are like, they live near me. They're just like, hey, I'm like going to a bar. You want to come? And I, so I, like, I went out <laughs> for a drink with a student, which is so cool. Um, and all their friends were like, oh, yeah. So how do you know Eric? I'm like, I'm his teacher. They're like, aren't you younger than him? I'm like, yeah, by a year. Right. I'm like, but I'm still his music teacher. <laughs> <laughs> being able, yeah, being able to realize that like, or having somebody tell you that they were able to like get through a tough time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because of the content that you made it's such a powerful thing that you never that's not your intent right right um and then being able to just have that face-to-face time with the people that um you either work with or are um you know facilitating to i guess with mm-hmm. your content is is a really powerful experience so definitely now content creation isn't the only thing you do <laughs> as we've said um during much of your time on YouTube, you were a college student and a teacher. And so how do you feel that your career in music will continue to be formed by these different venues? Um, so what I love about what I've been doing the past years is that I don't just do one thing. I think it's incredibly boring. Um, you know, <laughs> and even like, you know, a lot of people just have one job, but you have like hobbies that you pursue. Um, and I think that that's so important to have that. But for me, you know, getting to be a college student where I was learning new information in like a specific format where, you know, I gave them a lot of money versus being a teacher, getting the hands on experience in schools, doing this online work for the past three years, making these YouTube videos, learning how to be an arranger, a record, like, you know, an audio engineer, a video editor. Um, I did research while I was um, an undergraduate college student. I did two research projects looking into the benefits um like basically seeing if uh video game music aligns with the listening recommendations for young children um so that was a project that i got paid for (laughs) by my university to research with a professor that like is one of my biggest inspirations presented to teachers in the field like doctoral students um you know i've i've had a lot of cool experiences and um what kind of helped reaffirm, because I, I love getting to do all these different things. Um, it makes me really happy when I hit kind of like a, a rut with one of them or just like, I don't want to think about X. I have other things to turn to, so I'm not completely like stopped. Because um, mm-hmm. I like to work. I like to be productive. A little bit of a workaholic, <laughs> just a little bit. but um, <laughs> Just a smidge. Just a smidge. Um, but I remember I was talking with um, Ivy. Uh, they're the one of the main composers for Steven Universe because I also did a research project on Steven Universe, which I'm wrapping up. Um, but I got to interview right. both Ivy and Sarashu. And one thing that Ivy said, because I told them, I was like, yeah, I kind of do a lot of different things. And they said, I think that's amazing that you do because it's, you know, to have all your eggs in one basket, like that can be really dangerous. So I think it's awesome that you have all these different things because they help inform each other. And they're absolutely yeah. right that, you know, being a teacher in a school has helped me look about look differently at how I approach things with my adult students. How I teach adults helps me think about how to translate that to my younger students. Doing the YouTube stuff keeps me engaged with popular media to reach all my students. 
um, being a performer, like having all this pedagogy knowledge, um, you know, just being able to talk about a lot of different things. And, you know, I think what I love most about my job is that they're, it's combining all these things that I'm passionate about and are just huge things for me. Like, you know, being a musician, being a teacher, being a gamer, and just being a person who's very curious and loves questions. Um, I've loved that I've been able to find all these ways to bring these things together. Like, that's so cool. Like, I never could have imagined when I started college that, you know, like, if you told me, hey, you're going to do a research project on uh, how video game music aligns with children's listening recommendations, I would have said that you were absolutely insane. (laughs) Um, But that's something I got to do, bringing together all these facets of who I am. Um, And it made me, like, really think about, like, yeah, like, this is what I would love to do in the education world. I don't want to teach in a school for very long. I would love to be brought in for like education workshops and stuff and just talk about like video games and be like, get engaged with popular, engage with popular media. Okay. Like it's not rocket science. Yeah. I mean, and it makes a lot of sense because I mean, the main way that we consume any kind of creative art and I know we take it for granted is through popular media um we gain an interest in things like music or animation or uh video games or you know any of those kinds of creative fields through experiencing them in some way and i can't think of a lot of people that weren't inspired to go into it as a career because of popular media and not simply just due to classical media i think it's important to understand where things have come from but to kind of shut your eyes or ears away from what's popular now and what how that's inspiring people to be creative today do you think that having an additional source of income is beneficial to your making videos um so like i guess what i also wrote is like is it easier to worry less about money even if it means like a loss of time to dedicate to one particular thing um i would say that it's there's definitely an added pressure now that this is like what I'm doing because, you know, when I was in college, um, on top of everything I did at college, I was also a student ambassador and I worked in the, the admissions office and I gave tours. Like for me, that, that job didn't really bring in that much money because I wasn't work. I, I did it because I genuinely wanted to like inform and help people make a good decision for, for college. I didn't do it because I was, you know, getting paid well. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I also only worked like three hours a week. So, um, but I think (laughs) it was very different having like that safety net where it's like, well, I'm in college. So like, I still have time before real world kicks in. And then, Mm -hmm. um, you know, as uh, teaching jobs were very hard to to kind of come by, especially since I had certain parameters for if I was looking to stay in Boston, I didn't have a car. I'd have to get there from public transportation. I didn't want it to take too long and I wanted it to be part time. So that really, really limited my pool um, where I only applied for like a handful of teaching jobs. Um, So like, it's nice that I'm in a situation where like I'm I'm with my family and I I don't have to pay rent. Um, So that's like, you know, extra money back in my pocket every right. month instead of writing yeah. a check to a landlord. But um, I feel like there's definitely a pressure because I'm like, well, this is it. Um, so that's why I like having these other outlets of like doing Twitch streaming of, you know, getting to do my private teaching of like doing commission works um, because I think it can help alleviate some of that pressure that I feel of like, well, like this is what I'm doing. So you really got to... You yeah, know. this video has to do well. Or... Yeah, or just like, you know, you really need to make sure that this is good for yourself and like, you know, it's polished, um, you know, because what's your excuse? Like, it's not like you have mm-hmm. classes. Like, what is your excuse otherwise? I think that there's definitely a little bit of added pressure as like, this is the main thing now. But, um, you know, I just kind of have to remind myself that like, yes, this is your main thing, but remember why you do it. Like, you know, why you love it, why why you're passionate about this and that can help alleviate some of the the tension as well and talking to other content creators such as yourself just being like you ever have this feeling where like um <laughs> you just kind of feel like what are you doing and yeah you're not as good as everyone else <laughs> i mean we, and yeah. we were talking about that where like i i just put out a video today and i was having a meltdown 20 minutes before it like crying at my desk being like oh my god like i don't even know what i'm doing anymore with music like you know this doesn't even sound that good um and i like messaged a, a friend of mine i was like 
do you ever have moments where you feel like a failure? Um, and they're just like, <laughs> success is relative, it's subjective. And like, they're absolutely right. But um, what, I, what I mentioned to Laughing Boy before was like, um, to me, failure is a personal thing where like, if I don't like the work that I put out, like, I think I'm a failure. If others don't like the work that I put out, I don't think I'm a failure. Um, Cause right. I, I just value my opinion very heavily because this is work that's kind of contingent upon how I feel about what I'm making. So like when I don't feel good about it, I'm like, that's it. <laughs> Pack up your bags, cancel, <laughs> uh, you know, delete the account. Um, thankfully it's not that drastic, but um, you know, there's those moments where you kind of feel it. it's like, well, um, why? <laughs> why am I doing this? <laughs> am I good at this? Even no, like, you know, yeah. having those moments. Imposter syndrome is real. It's, it's very bad. real. I feel it mostly with myself. Like some people, they get it um, when they're in a group setting. For me, it's just mm -hmm. myself where I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm not good. I mean, you're just anticipating the response and the reactions of others. And I right. think that's a really tough moment. Um I guess like, yeah, for me, I usually release videos at a time when I'm already busy doing something else. And so I don't really have that. Oh, I'm not really even I thinking gotcha. about it yeah, when yeah. it goes live. That's pretty um, smart. I think it, that could be what, really no, helpful. It, oh. I mean, it could be. No. It's, it was definitely not intentional. Gotcha. I'm not a smart man. Um, I think you I'd don't give yourself enough LP. credit. Come on. With streaming, uh, making videos, teaching, you know, being a student, uh, you know, in a, in a way. Right. Uh, it seems like you kind of have a lot on your plate. Um, how do you keep up with that work-life balance? And do you have any recommendations for those who might be having similar struggles? Yeah. Um, so one thing I learned when I was uh, like right as student teaching was wrapping up because of, uh, you know, everything shutting down due to COVID was I had a meeting with a professor. Um, one of the things I applied for um, at the beginning of my senior year was a Fulbright scholarship because I wanted to go do an education project, research project in Japan. Um, you know, seeing how, you know, how different is the music pedagogy and philosophy in Japan versus America, something I had mm -hmm. done a little bit of work into uh, my second year of college. Um, and I was talking with the professor who helped me with that because I didn't even get past the first stage and I, like, felt really defeated. Um, and I was just like... Dr. Vu, I don't even know how I'm going to get to Japan to do something that isn't, like, just for, for pleasure. Like, I have no idea, like, what, how am I even going to get back there? And he's just like, Sap, there's so many ways that you can do that. Um, you know, he kind of helped me put things in perspective. Point being that um, we got to talk about, you know, he's like, well, what do you want to do in your life? Um, you know, asking those big questions. <laughs> um <laughs> and the one thing I told him I was struggling with in student teaching was balancing everything. Like, I felt so overwhelmed because from 5 a.m. to, like, 10 p.m. every day was about these kids and about this job. And don't get me wrong, these kids were great and, like, you know, I needed to invest that time, but I didn't have, like, you know, forget the time to, like, um for doing my jobs I didn't have time to be a college student to see my friends to even take care of myself like have enough time to make food like you know to take care of myself mentally and that's why yeah. I was like I'm only looking for a part-time job because I don't want to give way to these other things that you know make me who I am um and my professor was like you know the concept of the work-life balance he goes that's kind of stupid he goes work is part of your life and I was like Oh, you know, I never thought about it like that. Um, cuz it is. And so like when people ask me like, "Well, how do you balance, you know, that?" I'm like, "Well, I balance I attempt to balance my life, not work life." Um, but I think it's important to um at least have you carve out time every day for yourself um and do something that you like. So for me, I try to stop working around like 8 or nine if I can help it um like you know if I have an idea I'm gonna go work on something but if I'm like dying I'm like all right it's 8 p.m pull out your switch play a game um you know just doing something that calms me I crochet I bake um just taking a little bit of time every day to kind of let yourself breathe is super critical um and the no, other yeah exactly yeah. I mean you have to if you keep taking in breaths you're gonna run out of a place to put those breaths um, exactly well like, you have you have to have time to be off I yes think, and let the brain just rest 
Mm -hmm. even if you are still stimulating it in other ways right like for me that's playing video games where it's like a very like I'm in a very relaxed state when I play video games even though like even when I'm an intense boss fight that's way less stressful than trying to do stuff for my job um yeah but then I think like scheduling you know like I used to be a fiend like I have a google calendar and that's how I stay on top of things a little bit um yeah but you know I used to be kind of obsessive about it where like if I wasn't doing what I said I would at 10 a.m I'd have like a meltdown (laughs) um so I've gotten a lot better about that where it's kind of like you know, these are just things that I'd like to get done today or I want to get done today. And this is the relative time frame that I'm looking to get them done in. Um, and sometimes, like, I'm a little too lenient with that. So I'll make, like, a to-do list. So, like, I'll have, like, a to-do list for, like, September 19th, tw- uh, 2020. Like, you know, what do I want to get done kind of thing. So I can, like, check the boxes and, like, really remind myself. I'm like, what do I really need and or want to get done today? Um yeah. You know, just having those physical reminders because I'm never going to remember anything with all the information and things that I hear in a given day. Um, so that definitely helps me keep on top of it and talking to others about my work um, because it helps like motivate me and remind me like, oh, yeah, this is something I have to do. Right. I think that those are a few tips that kind of help me um, stay organized, but also maintain sanity. Well, and I guess if you don't mind my, I think you kind of said it before, but Mm -hmm. if you don't mind my picking back off of that. um, So one of the things that I had to learn in terms of that was it's something similar, right? You five o'clock pencils down. I'm not going to work on my job anymore. Right. Um, But then how much weight do you put on the things that you say that you want to do with your time? Yeah. And so what would happen is that if I, Let's say I was like, oh, I'm trying to, I want to work out Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, If I don't get to have that happen because of anything, like it could be maybe other people want to hang out or something happens and, or I'm just feeling depressed. I put a lot of onus on the fact that I couldn't do that thing. Mm -hmm. And so it would just make it worse. And so like there are going to be things that you can't control and to be okay with that and to be okay with the fact that like, because uh or like if you're not enjoying it like let's say like oh i'm gonna play video games tonight and you just something you just run into a real bad boss fight and you're just not getting through that part and you feel like that time was wasted yeah because you didn't get to enjoy it right but that's not really what that time was there for it's not Maybe you didn't necessarily enjoy it, but you still had that time to breathe process. and relax. Yeah. And it was exactly. also a learning process. Um, yeah. I would say like taking taking it one day at a time has been like a philosophy of mine for like the past year or so, um, you know, because uh, as, as I'm sure you're aware, like, you know, whenever you're kind of like getting to the supposed next stage in your life, it's the question of, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And that question gave me so much anxiety because I'm still getting asked that. They're like, well, now that you've graduated, I'm like, don't ask me that question because I'm going to tell you you're not going to be happy and I'm going to hear your opinion and I don't want to hear it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who's this que- Who's this conversation for, really? Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Um, and kind of, you know, because you said I can swear. My motto, and anyone can tell you this, shit happens like it does like there are days where you don't want to do anything shit happens it's okay you adapt yeah. that's i talk about that all the time like even um like i got a message that was like hey is everyone good for blah 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 tonight and they're like oh i actually have this thing can we push it back a little bit sorry things have been crazy with schedule i'm like hey i'm like shit happens i get it um mm-hmm. you know we forget about stuff it's okay well and again it's like it's okay to feel that disappointment um, that something fell through. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's important to make plans in order to figure out what you're doing with your day. Um, but to feel okay with that disappointment, but to not let it turn into something worse. Right. And to not dwell on it. Um, like, you know, I think it's important to kind of view most things as a learning experience. Like an example I'll give was um, I tried making uh, Japanese the the souffle pancakes for the first time. Oh yeah! Last week, I've never done it, but I've done different components of it. I've made pancakes. I've made meringues. I understood the theory behind how it all worked, um, and the way that I looked at it, is I'm like, they're not going to be perfect. 
I'm like, but, you know, I'm gonna learn. And, like, you know, the first match, like, you know, again, were they as fluffy or and big as they normally are? No. But they still tasted good. And I learned, like, you know, first time I did it, I was like, okay, well, I put way too much oil in the pan, so these are not gonna do what they gotta do. And then the second time, I was like, okay, well, I opened the lid a little bit too much, so then the steam, like, you know, because the steam let out, they got flat. So, you know, I learned from it. And again... They still tasted good at the end of the day, so yeah. Um, and I didn't burn down the house, so I think it, you know I won at Those the end of the day. Those are two pluses. Those are two, yeah. <laughs> um, they do look really cool, though. They do look so cool. They're really hard, but you know, don't get too discouraged because it's like, okay, well, this didn't work, but what did I learn from it? Um, and that's something that I want to be better about, you know, with my videos, because there are times where I'm just kind of like. Mm. and it's like okay well why are you making that sound you know yeah. like what ca- <laughs> what did you on? yeah like what did you do that you didn't like and how can you improve on that for next time i don't think fix is always the right word um like you know how can you improve? yeah yeah it's a it's a very judgmental route to take because fix also implies that it's a permanent thing where it's like yeah i fixed it it's like no you improved on it because yeah like you know and as you fix or improve certain things other things will start to kind of like falter you're like whoa i never noticed that before um Mm -hmm. but it happens yeah shit happens shit happens isn't that a great motto (laughs) and i always adapt it for when i like you know when i talk to my middle schoolers i'm like hey i'm like sometimes you have an off day i'm like you know why they're like why i'm like because stuff happens i'm like life happens i'm like things i'm like things will just happen okay like they get the point of it yeah. but <laughs> so moving on to the final uh i, I think this episode has, ta- has taken a little bit longer than i thought it would sorry um, i went on a few no detours. we're good i this i this is the 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 big one this yeah. is the big episode we're we're gonna do our conclusions Yay. So what, have we, what have we learned <laughs> what have we learned class yeah pretty much um <laughs> yeah pretty much and uh i guess first off this is actually a new one i i looked this up for like good podcast questions because <laughs> i'm a hack um but what is one question that we have not asked here that you had wanted to be asked this was one that i really was struggling with to like think of it's a, a weird one right yeah because you were so thorough so like i'm just like ah, oh, i'm like he might have asked that and i just don't remember kind of thing um my my first thought is like um like a, like, you know, what's a song that um, that you like that no one would expect that you would like kind of thing? Do you, do you want me to, like, answer that question? Yes, please. Um, no, we'll just, we'll just leave it <laughs> out just in the Just leave it ether. in the oblivion, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, one, one thing that was really, I don't want to say unique, but, like, to me it feels unique. Um, growing up, everyone in my family listened to different music. So, like, my parents really liked pop music from, like, the 60s through the 80s. But my dad grew up um, in Italy. So, like, I've heard a lot of European music, both, like, popular and, like, a little bit more classical traditional stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I have two older brothers. One listened to, like, R&B and rap um, and hip-hop. And then my other brother listened to rock metal punk and alternative so i kind of got like mostly everything except like jazz and uh like uh, country (laughs) music growing up so like to me i really got exposed to a lot of things and like i'm I'm kind of a sponge where i like most music except i don't really like country and i don't like baroque music two very weird categories but um (laughs) but i'll listen to pretty much anything else and like i'll at least enjoy it like you know i might not listen to it again but i'm like yeah that was cool um but one song I really like and I've always wanted to do a cover of but I haven't is um are you familiar with the anime Dead Man Wonderland? Uh I am in the sense that when it came on Tsunami I was like, "Oh, they're really hitting us hard with the swears and the censored stuff." Yeah. Um but uh yes, I'm aware. So of the, the anime. opening of that song is called One Reason. Um and I have always wanted to do a cover of it and it's like really dark and like metal and stuff. Um but I've always just really liked it. Um you know, not cuz I'm like I'm an emo at heart kind of thing. It's just like I always <laughs> I just like how the song sounds. Like I think it's so cool. Um and I feel like that's someone wouldn't expect that. They're just like but like you're you're a nice girl and like I'm like uh first of all I'm a ruthless <laughs> individual um and very mean but um people were just like but like that's so different than your music that you put out I'm like yeah that's fine 
<laughs> That's very different from Rolling Star, I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's super different. Where do you... S- oh my god, I can't... I forgot I wrote this question. I made a joke about it. Where do you see content creation in five to ten years, and where do you see yourself in that environment? Um. So, content creation in five to ten years, I honestly have no idea um i i hope that i at least you know if not keep making youtube videos like i see myself doing that for a while just like in engaging with some kind of online community whether it be uh like youtube or twitch because i like that youtube has been very reflective for me almost like um a journal in a way where it's like really cool to be like you know dated like june 13th 2013 or whatever and, like, be able to, like, go back to that moment in time, I think is so cool. Yeah. But I think, like, as a whole, like, my, my goal at this moment in time with what I do is that I just want to be able to, like, make music, um, you know, to reach as many people as possible and to help them kind of understand the role that music plays in their lives. Um, you know, just understanding, like, you know, why does something make you feel the way that you do? Um, you know, to be able to do that for people and just get them to connect like with music on a deeper level like that's really what I want at this moment in my life I think that's great too I think being able again like we're talking about how to evolve your content but still have it be you right I think that's a great direction to go in yeah um and like I said kind of before like education stuff like being able to because again I don't want to teach school for very long I never saw myself doing that for a long time I love doing private online teaching especially to adults where like they feel they always feel it's too late to start I'm like uh no I'm like you know how much stuff I learn on a daily basis as an adult I'm like most things um because you learn the most when you leave school um, I mean, it's definitely harder to catch up, but yeah, it's yeah. not impossible. Right. Um, so, you know, like being able to do that and just share why specifically video game music is so important in this day and age because of how much time like children are spending on technology and like thinking about how much they get to engage with that stuff outside of the classroom and like, you know, they're motivated, like they want to play the video games. Some of those kids don't want to sit in like freaking science class or like... Um, like some of the, a lot of them don't even want to sit in music class because they're like, this is so stupid. Um, yeah. so, you know, to engage with what they like, love that because it gets to help them find their interest and their motivations. Well, and again, like we've been talking about, why do they like it? You know, mm-hmm. being able to have that connection to understand that connection better would just help them out in the long run in terms of developing that relationship. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if you were able to go back in time, and you had only one sentence that you could tell your younger self before you're brought back to the present, what would it be? I had to think about this because I was like, how can I make this one sentence? <laughs> um, it, yeah, that's why I specifically asked yeah. it that way. <laughs> I would say, like, trust trust and believe in yourself, comma, and do what makes you happy. Because that's like a crappily put together sentence, but grammar is not my strong suit. So, um, but those are definitely like <laughs> three things. You're bending the rules. I know. I'm, no, I'm very good, good at you're that. You're good. Um, as, a, as a musician, <laughs> I'm very good at bending the rules because that's my job. But um, yeah, <laughs> I would say that, you know, believing in yourself and trusting, they're two very different things. Um, because I think like believing in yourself is, you know, that's an inspirational thing. Um, while trusting is like, you know, having faith in your abilities kind of thing um yeah and then just doing what makes you happy that you make the right decision yeah Yeah. and then just doing what makes you happy like um i feel like young me would say duh but with the obstacles that she faced um you know just really reminding herself you know be true to who she is and like you know at the end of the day do what makes you happy not what you think will make others happy or doing things just for other people so yeah I liked that question. It really got me to think, like, how can I condense these things into one sentence? And is this even a sentence? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a little proud of that one. I'm not you should lie. be. It's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, one final question. Um, this is a little bit more of a silly one, but I think it's a good ending question. <laughs> if you could pick one reaction GIF that best describes you as a person, what would that one be? Well, first of all, I can't believe that you say GIF. Sorry, um, I say GIF. Anyway, uh, we're still <laughs> we're still friends. It's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I w- See, you said you're a very transparent person. I, I am a very transparent person. <laughs> um, okay, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought about this for like a solid five minutes 
but it was like yeah. I was getting set up I was like <sighs> and like I was really struggling because um one of the first things that came to my mind it's not a gif but it's like a sticker um on Facebook the trash of <laughs> That just like shaking its head up and down. I feel like that's just like my internal state. Um, <laughs> Let me see if I can. Find and I it. and I dress. The, the reason why I did yeah. this is because I want to be able to show. Oh yeah, and I dress like very dark all the time. So like those are my colors, like purple and black. So like aesthetically, it is me. Um, but if you want like an actual gif, um, is there's this horrifying gif of Ricky from Xenoblade. It's like a cosplay of ricky um i'll have to send it to you um i was gonna but say it just if you send like, me all of these yeah, yeah. like it's, it's kind of like moving it's art like you it's a really good cosplay except for the arms and i'm like i just i feel like that's how i am sometimes where people are like looking at the the shell of who i am and they're like hey that looks pretty good and then my arms and like my brain are just like <laughs> <"Woo!"> <laughs> whoa <laughs> um yeah, I think I have both of those gifts on on my computer um, because they're they're Twitch alert things. But I feel like those are just kind of my internal state. Yes, here here I can send you one right now. This is the the Ricky one. Oh my! Isn't that God. horrifying? It's kind of horrifying. <laughs> yeah, um, and I don't think I have the new <laughs> one on hand, but I can I can definitely send that to you. But um, yeah, it's it's pretty horrifying. But do you see how that describes what I'm talking about? That's gonna be a dream. That I have later tonight. It's one of it's one of my alerts, and it always terrifies people whenever it shows up, and it's not very often. But they're just it's like too, it's they're just it's like too what weird. They're like what was that? I'm like donate again to find out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I like about no. my gifts. They're just like so weird that people are like, wait, I need to see that again. I did appreciate that every time you said GIF, it sounded like you had to pause for a second so you didn't accidentally say it as GIF. <laughs> Jeff um, is a peanut butter. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed your very last time <laughs> on the show. No, I ser- I had so much fun with this. I love getting to answer questions and getting to like talk with a friend about like, you know, just philosophies of life of specifically content creation. Like I truly, this is one of my favorite things to do. So thank you so much for asking me having me be a part of this i really it was so much fun to do this you did an excellent job with these questions like you really did they were so thorough they were really well thought out they weren't like invasive like i didn't there was no point where i was like why is he asking a question like this um (laughs) true no like really um so i think you did an incredible job like thinking of these questions like you know asking the questions just like you know you're very good at talking to people. I think you need to give yourself more credit for it. So well, and and to to your point, like I, these were really excellent like answers. Um, I got a lot of I got a lot out of this. Yay. Uh, I I had no expectations walking in with these, but I was I'm that's a good piece of advice. Got to do this, yeah. <laughs> Go in with <laughs> low to nothing. little no expectations. Yes. Uh, expect nothing. Eat Arby's. Uh, <laughs> So no, I, this was a really great talk. Um, it was it was really fun to be able to get to do this with you. So I think thanks for coming on. Oh, thank you. And uh, hopefully we'll see everyone later. Thanks for everyone for watching. Uh, I'll see you on the next series. Goodbye. Good night. Goodbye. Follow the bed bugs bite. <laughs>